So um, I thought I'd get you on this talk today. Just the purpose of this is to educate athletes about you, about your program, and we're going to be posting it on different platforms. So we're going to put it as a podcast and up on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, there's a lot of top athletes that we work with from Australia and New Zealand. And we do work with athletes globally, but that's where the majority of the athletes come from. Yeah. And it's great for them to get to know who you are, you know, what you're looking for, what you guys are about, what kind of girls you want to recruit. And yeah, I just really, really appreciate your time. But I guess to get started, um, you know, we've known you now for a couple of years, I think when you were at Mississippi State. Yeah. Yeah. So I've not yeah. known since um, when you was at Mississippi State as the, as the on the men's tennis team. And then you went to Bellamine University, which transitioned from Division Two to Division One. Your role was both uh, men's and women's, I believe. And yep. uh, now, as of July, you got the job here at James Madison University, a big Division One school. I think you guys got about twenty thousand students. Is that right? Yeah, it's something like that. Like Twenty-one, maybe. So yeah, it's huge. Pretty, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, and so your role there is the, you're the assistant women's tennis coach, Division One program. Very, very strong. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So um, Noah. Let's talk about James Madison. You've arrived there. You've been there for about a month now. What is your first impressions of the, of the campus? I mean, the campus is beautiful. We're in the Shenandoah Valley, so in a very mountainous area around us. So, I mean, you kind of drive around the town in Harrisonburg, and, I mean, it's incredible views all the way. Um, you know, it's a great town, great college town. Uh, I think about like 55,000 people or so. So, wow. um, you know, you got everything you need here. Um, and then, you know, on campus, it's a beautiful campus. Um, and then, you know, with the athletics, I mean, James Madison is in a tremendous place right now, all around the athletic department. You know, everybody is competing for CAA championships and, um, you know, softball just made a huge run in the Women's College yeah. World Series, beating Oklahoma, who did end up winning the national championship. But, you know, got some big wins in that. And, uh, you know, we're uh, just the athletic department as a whole is in an unreal spot right now. What sort of um, really excites me about this conversation is that, you know, you were at Bellamine University for a short period of time and for an opportunity for you to then go quickly to take over a, a big time program must have been must have really excited you and so I know that it's a very solid program and obviously your success has been amazing just seeing that banner in the background you did you guys have done pretty well um yeah. what sort of UTR range do your girls what sorry let me rephrase that what UTRs do your girls have on your roster uh, I think everybody pretty much is in the nines, maybe a couple high eights towards the bottom, but, you know, it ranges from high nine to low nine. Um, so that's generally, you know, where we are right now and what's going to be competitive in the conference. But, you know, the, the better UTRs we can get, the, you know, we're going to take yeah. the best players we can get. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we are at the moment. And for those that are tuning into this chat that are from different sports, because I know a lot of them are just wanting to hear from a college coach at a, at a big time division one program. The UTR system is a tennis rating system that we use. Um, the higher you are, the better you are, um, so to speak. So the girls on your tennis team, right? Do a lot of them have aspirations to go professional or what kind of mindset do they have? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the goal to go professional for most of them, maybe a couple of them, but um, you know, it's, it's really about being the best college player you can be at right now. And, you know, if the professional opportunities do present themselves later, that kind of, you know, that, that happens and that's great, but, you know, they're really focused on building the team and being together as a unit and, you know, making the team as good as possible. And, you know, that's, that's had a lot of success over the course since, uh, Shelly Jadon, our head coach has been here for three years and won the conference in her first year and then COVID and then won it again last year. So, you know, the focus I wouldn't say is necessarily on pro tennis right now, but, you know, just building, building the team and, you know, reaching those goals. As I said before, you know, you went to Mississippi State where you actually knew a Kiwi, Isaac Beecroft. Yeah. And um, yeah, shout out to Isaac. And um, you, you've you been around some pretty amazing facilities, you know, not just being at Mississippi State, you've been playing against other big time universities as well. You're arriving at James Madison. What's it like in comparison to some of those big Power Five conference schools? 
Uh, what sort of facilities do your athletes get access to? Yeah, I mean, we've got six uh, outdoor, cam- outdoor courts on campus and then three indoor courts in a bubble. And, uh, you know, they're very easy access. We don't have to go to a club or anything like that and rent courts. So having those facilities on campus is obviously ideal um, right in the middle. Of, I mean, right next to the football facility and every, the big football stadium on campus. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to get a lot of student, uh, the student body to come out to the matches and, you know, support our girls and our guys, too. Um, and yeah, I mean, tennis wise, that's, you know, the, the court set up and then we have a really good, uh, uh, weight room on campus and get to work with a great strength staff here and, you know, athletic training and everything like that. We have top of the line facilities and all of that. Um, we have a rec center, a student rec center. That's one of the best rec centers I've seen wow. in the country. So, you know, that's if you, line. if you want, yeah, I mean, it, they've got a pool in there or a few pools in there. They've got, you know, any sort of workout class you wanted to do, like on your own, you wanted to go get some extra reps in the weight room or anything like that. Rock climbing they have there. Um, you know, there's a million different things in that place, but, um, I, I went in it on my interview and was kind of blown away at the facility there. So, you know, even on top of what you just get as a student athlete, you know, you have the extra stuff like that as well. On campus, it's a massive, massive school. On campus, what kind of like food chains do you guys have there? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different food chains. James Madison is actually generally ranked in the top five for on-campus dining. So that's, uh, you know, (laughs) maybe you don't think of that when you're getting recruited and everything like that. But once you're on campus, when you have all those food options that, you know, even just the cafeterias on campus, you know, that that starts to become an important factor really quickly. You don't want to go somewhere where there's, you know, not very good food. Yeah, no, for sure. And so when athletes go there and let's say there's a girl, she's amazing, you want to offer a full scholarship. Mm -hmm. What's covered in that scholarship um, in terms of like, I know like meals will be covered and accommodation and tuition, but what kind of sporting expenses are covered? I mean, we pretty much have everything you could possibly need. We're, you know, we're going to have the rackets. I've got you can kind of see our stringer right there. So you know, we're stringing rackets <laughs> in the office. We got this whole bookcase here is full of strings yep. and everything like that. So we're going to cover the strings, cover you know rackets, clothes. We're in Nike school, as you can see. See that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything you could possibly need to you know perform at your best and be yep. comfortable on the court and off the court as well. We're gonna we're gonna cover everything. And I mean, it's very rare for universities to cover rackets because some colleges don't have the budget. So when they do cover, it's very special. Um, right. You know, do you guys provide any frames, like any rackets? So if a student's using like prints or like head or bevelet, like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not a situation where we're going to get, you know, you're going to get six new rackets every year, probably, maybe if you needed it. But uh you know, you're whatever you need, whatever brand you, you feel comfortable playing with, you know, we're going to make sure that we're able to pro- provide whatever, whatever that is. Just make sure athletes don't break those rackets, eh? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. That's a, that's a big no, no. Big question I had, a bit of a personal question for you. How fast can you string a tennis racket? Ooh, so when I was at Mississippi State, I was serving, one of my duties was the racket technician. And uh, we had a match against Tennessee one time. And it was three all, I think it was two all in the third set. And one of our guys broke a string and I had it out by four, two in the second set. So no 15, way 14 something. So Man, that was, that's cool. I, I was pretty impressed yeah. with myself on that one. So I'm 25 uh, but, minutes, man. Like, yeah, I mean, generally it's going to be 25, but when I need to knock one out, you, we got somebody on court, you know, that's, that's the yeah, situation. You have to. You stuff and you got to bust it up. I remember when I, before I started platform six years ago, I also used to work for the Planet Pro Tennis Academy, which is this $10 million tennis facility in Wellington. And I was in the pro shop. So I was stringing rackets and the front yeah. face of the shop, like selling rackets and that sort of stuff. And there was a big school fixture on. It was the final of two high schools playing against each other. And one of the staff members of the academy was coaching one of the school teams. And he comes in and says, Amrit, it's uh, one all in the third set. This guy's got no racket. I need to borrow a demo. And can you string his racket right now? I was like, yeah, I'll get onto it. And I, I was trying to crack like 15 minutes. And I did the mains quick and I was doing the crosses and I got to the tie off at the bottom 
after z- zigzagging all the way through the um, the crosses, and I doubled up, up the uh, top, and uh, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. what have I done? The guy ended up winning the match with a demo racket, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I was pretty good. Telling that story, I knew exactly where it was going. It was <laughs> yeah. there. It happened to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, and I also remember like my dad. My dad's a coach, and um, we would be traveling, you know, every weekend to tournaments. Now, my dad is a legend; like he would string rackets in like twelve minutes. He's very, very good at it. And, you know, he'll be, he'll get like the natural gut. We've got a natural gut yeah. factory here where they actually make it out of like, yeah. you know natural gut I won't go into the details I won't go into the details but you know what I mean and um he would string all these rackets and he asked me one day when I was 16 he goes Amrit can you please cut those strings out of that racket and I said yeah sure and I cut the strings out of the racket that he just did yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's uh that's not a good day <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a seventy dollars set of string. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so now I'm happy doing my recruiting now, just helping out these sure. deals. For sure. So <laughs> back to uh, back to James Madison. Now you've t- talked about the facilities. You know they get Nike gear. They get well looked after. Um, what is like a day? Like what sort of schedule do the girls have um, at your program? You know, you, obviously bearing in mind that you are very new to the system you know, this August, usually what's going to be your schedule for the girls? Yeah. So, you know, having a men's and women's team on campus, you're going to have to rotate the court time, you know, and base it around class schedules. So usually we'll go maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll go in the mornings and go yeah. maybe eight to 11, say, uh, maybe two and a half hours of tennis, 30 minutes conditioning. Um, and then the other days we would go maybe uh, in the afternoon, say maybe two to four thirty or so, something like that. Yeah. And then, so that's our team practice. And then uh, you're going to have your individuals throughout the week. Um, you know, one or two individuals, and then you've got your weight sessions throughout the day. And uh, you know, this fall, luckily, we're it's looking like we're going to have a fall season. So we'll be eating on the weekend. So that's big. Yeah. Um, you know, something we maybe took for granted before, but you know, that's going to kind of be what we're looking at. And then obviously all that's based around your class schedule. So making sure, you know, trying our best to make sure we can get the classes that aren't going to interfere with the practice time and everything like that. So that's pretty much, you know, 20 hours a week. That's what everybody's at, but that's pretty much, you know, kind of what our schedule is going to look like throughout the, throughout the weeks. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I want to pick your brain a little bit now being a coach that's been in the system for a long time. Obviously, you have you have understood the COVID rule that's come about um, with the extra year, and I want to know how has that impacted your recruiting? Um, you know, it's we're gonna have we're losing two girls, and we could lose more than that this year. Um, two girls aren't gonna take their extra year, so you know we're in a situation where without COVID we would have lost, I think six girls this year. Now we're only losing two. So, you know, that's who we're replacing this upcoming year. And it's kind of, you know, we're, we're, some of those girls are going to use their fifth year and, you know, maybe someone last second decides that they want to transfer somewhere else or, or, you know, they want to get into a grad school program or something like that. So it's always going to kind of be, I don't think there's like a set answer that yeah. everybody can be like, you know, today I know what's going to happen in a year to, I mean, this is going to affect us for the next four or five years. Right. So, um, you know, it's, it's something where, it's always kind of moving. And I think as coaches, we just got to kind of be on top of it and, then, you know, making sure that we're, we're recruiting the right kids that are going to be able to come in and, you know, maybe there's not quite as many spots available and that's unfortunate, but you know, there it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's like a moving target, I guess would kind of be the okay. best way to describe it. I mean, this is why, like, my job has become so much harder. And athletes, yeah, uh, for you sure. know, for you guys, you've got, you know, you've got your girls that might want to come back. And then you've got other girls on the transfer system, uh, on the transfer portal. Then you've got um, freshmen coming in from, from out of high school wanting to start as a first-year freshman student at university. So you've got different groups you can pick from. But I guess with, with you, you know, that could have been six potential spots for freshmen to grab. And now it's, uh, you know, there's only, uh, what, two spots now. So what is your advice to student athletes that, you know, let's say they might not have an opportunity at yours and they're about like a UTR, a low eight. What's your advice to them? 
Um, you know, if you're, if you're using UTR, there's, uh, you can go in and kind of put your UTR in and see the schools where you're going to be able to, you know, UTR isn't everything. It's a base. Um, but you know, you kind of get the idea of where I'm going to fit in the lineup and everything like that. So I think the biggest thing is just making sure that everyone does their homework, you know, as coaches, we have to go through all these players and see, you know, what we do like, what we don't like and everything about them. It's the same thing for the student athletes coming in and, you know, just making sure that you're finding the best situation for yourself. You know, I would, I would love for every person that I, every girl that I talk to, to say, you know, James Madison's the best fit for me, but maybe it's not. And maybe, you know, we, it's my job to find those people, but it's also your job to figure out what I, what situation I'm going to fit best into. Right. So finding out the culture from the coaches, the players, um, and, you know, just doing as much research as you can, yeah. um, on every opportunity that you're presented with. I'm telling my athletes now, like, cause like the difference between me and other people, I don't know what other agencies do, but I sort of look after them when they're in the U S and I tell them, you know, it's a four year it's a four year plan when you're in the States. Like if you go there in first year and you love it, great. And you're happy there, you know, stay there, don't move. But there's a lot of girls that are quite ambitious that want to try and chase different opportunities that I work with. And would you like, so you're open to taking a transfer student like two years down the road? Uh, I mean, potentially if it's the right situation and the right fit for our culture, um, you know, it is a useful tool for us in the transfer portal. Um, but you know, the biggest thing is just finding the right girl. That's, you know, obviously we need the tennis level to be good enough, but we got to have the right mentality, um, the right, you know, the girls that are going to do the right thing every day. I think that's the biggest thing is just, you know, holding each other accountable as, um, as a team, as a unit, and just making sure that, you know, we, we bring the right girls in, you know, if you bring someone in, that's not a good fit for your culture, things can go south really quickly. Right. So that's, uh, I, I think that's kind of the biggest thing with that. You've been around the block. You've played a lot of, a lot of been a lot of coaching uh, situations with athletes on court. Um, have you had any situations with athletes like flaring up and getting frustrated during a match? And like, how do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of situations where, you know, um, last year, you know, building the program at Bellarmine, you know, you're you're not having a lot of success the, the first year. So obviously, you know, when you're when you're down in a match, it's quick to, you know, go go away. And the mentality that we work on in practice, maybe maybe you fall out of that a little bit. But it's just about, you know, making sure as a coach, my job is to try to keep the players as calm as possible and focus as possible in those situations, you know, bringing the negative energy to the court is usually not going to help you in a situation, especially, you know, when your teammates are looking over two courts down and you're kind of, you know, screaming at yourself or anything like that. It's uh, something that you kind of got to take a hold of and take ownership of, um, you know, and as a coach as well, um, just trying to, you know, focus on the positives, you know, you can find a positive in, in any situation really. Um, and, you know, just making sure that that outweighs all the negative, you know, a negative thought can be um, outdone with three positive thoughts is what I've always heard. So if you can find a way to, you know, kind of implement that generally things are going to pick up for you a little bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, just doing that day in and day out and it starts on the practice court, right? If you're throwing your racket and cussing and all kinds of stuff on the practice court, it's going to be tough to be calm in a match situation. You know, it's a, it's a lot more stressful. So day to day, um, I think if you're, if you're really honed in on that and focused on that, you know, it's going to be easier in those match situations. I'm going to ask you a question I've never asked a coach ever, ever actually in my life. Um, a college coach that is and strategy going into a match for an athlete. So, you know, as you know, there's so many athletes that circulate within different programs, athletes that come in for the first time and you're playing them for the first time. What, what strategy do you give your players to play against someone that you don't even know? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of variables to that question, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man, think, it's a loaded question. <laughs> it's a loaded yeah, question. Um, I mean, I think, you know, as a coach, it's our job to, 
to see kind of the strengths and weaknesses of the opponent and, you know, kind of getting those first few games underway, you kind of start to quickly see what's going on in the match when you don't know the opponent and kind of, you know, it, it obviously varies from situation to situation. You know, if you're, you might need to take the ball early against a girl and you might need to, you know, stay back and rip a few and, you know, really look to work the point a little more against a different girl. So I think just kind of, I don't think you can necessarily go into a match that you don't know the opponent and have, you know, this is what I'm going to do. It's all kind of figuring it out in the moment, in the moment. And I think that's the great part about college tennis is having a coach on the court um, to, you know, see those things for you and help you to work through those things during the matches. Awesome. And when you girls um, arrive at campus in August and you're starting and you're doing invitationals, when you travel to different invitationals this coming up, August, this fall semester, how do you guys get there? Do you guys have like a minivan that you guys get access to and you, or a bus? Yeah. You fly? How does it work? Yeah. So at JMU, we have like a whole fleet of vehicles. We have different cars, different vans, buses, everything like that. If it's a trip that's far enough away, yeah, we'll fly. Um, but you know, it kind of depends where we're going. So if we're going to California, obviously we're going to, we're going to fly across the country for that one. We're not going to take a couple cars and drive a few days away, but, uh, yeah, JMU, we're, we're really lucky to have those vehicles on campus and we don't have to go, you know, rent a van necessarily and stuff like that. We, we have access to a lot of, uh, of different ways of transportation. And I've, I've spoken to a few coaches and they tell me about the big buses that they have. You mentioned that you guys got your own big bus on that bus. Is there like Wi-Fi and stuff like that for athletes to use? Yeah. Wi-Fi, you know, you got your TVs, you can watch a movie as a team. You got, you can listen to music. You can, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do. You can study if you need to. Um, yeah, we got, we got all that kind of stuff. And, you know, especially being on the road, as much as we are playing tennis, you know, having the, having the Wi-Fi and everything like that to make sure you're able to get your homework done on the road. That's huge. That's awesome. Amazing. And my last question, I'm going to, I won't keep you too long, but I want to ask you one last question. You've recruited a lot of athletes before. I've been asking this um, question to a lot of coaches I've been interviewing. What are the red flags for you? What, what makes you think, oh, I want to move in this direction or that direction with an athlete, or I want to stay away from this athlete? Um, you know, you can kind of tell on a phone call when a kid, you know, maybe not as genuine as what you're looking for. And, you know, we want, we want girls that are going to come in and, you know, be professional and kind of put the, put the tennis and the school above everything else. And, you know, we don't, want anyone that's going to say, you know, I, I want to go to college because I want to party and, you know, tennis, I'll do that on the side and kind of, but I'm, right. you know, that's the, that's one red flag. And then I think, you know, in today's day and age, I think you can see a lot of that on social media as well. Um, yeah. You know, when we're, when we're looking at girls, a lot of it is through Instagram and Facebook and everything like that. So, you know, if a girl's got a lot of, you know, tennis pictures on her, on our Instagram and everything like that, you know, that's something, okay, this girl really cares about tennis and, you know, just taking it seriously for the most part, maybe there's exceptions to that, but, you know, if you got a girl that's got, you know, she's, she's got beer in all her pictures and, you know, she's got all kinds of parties and stuff like that. We're going to say, Hey, maybe you know, the priorities might not align with yeah. what we're looking to continue to build here. Do you go further and like also contact like maybe, coaches in that country that you know or recruitment agencies and do a bit of a background check as well yeah I mean I think that's hugely important you know the coaches in the home country are the ones that have developed the the player to what she is right now so getting those ideas from her or from her coach and everything like that is going to be massive and making sure that we're not you know we kind of have a plan with uh with that home coach and uh you know making sure that we're we're not maybe trying something out that they've tried and didn't work before and some stuff like that different situations but you know uh i i think that's massively important making sure you know everyone's on the same page and they're not hearing different things from from us and from their coach back home one thing that people don't understand is that like the college system and the network in tennis especially globally is very small like, for example, if you wanted to, like, recruit a Kiwi and 
let's say you didn't know me and you wanted to find out a little bit about this person. Well, you've already had Isaac Beecroft three and a half years ago being at Mississippi State with you and you could easily just text him and then he could tell, he could find out information from someone and then give that to you. Like there's always I eyes on. <laughs> I definitely have. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So there's always eyes on. And I think that a lot of young athletes listening to this and parents should understand that the way that they conduct themselves at local tournament, inter-club matches, whether it's big or small, um, you know, there's always going to be eyes on and you're always like that is an opportunity to sell yourself because if you do really, really well, you act of kindness or something, whatever it is, and that that is spoken about you to a college coach, that's going to land you like a $200,000 scholarship. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you never know who's watching and, you know, you've you've heard that from your parents probably growing up your entire life. So yeah. it, it couldn't be more true. Um, you know, the the things people say about you go a long way, whether that's good or bad. Um, you know, you we've all got our our people that we talk to about certain players and everything like that. And, you know, you start to build the trust with that. And if you you know, you you think maybe ah, no one's here, you know, I can get away with throwing my racket or, you know, cheating and stuff like that. You know, that somebody's going to find out about that. And, you know, it's not going to be uh, in your best interest. That's for sure. So making sure that you're as professional as you can be um, at all times. And that's easier said than done, but, you know, it's a conscious decision that you've got to make day in and day out. And whether it's on the practice court or just, you know, in a match is how you treat people. You know, you, I, I've always thought that, you know, the, whoever you're around at your club, maybe at home, you know, the, the person that comes in sweeps the courts in the morning, you got to treat them the same way you would, you know, your, your coach, it's all the same. And, um, the way you treat people is, is massive and not just in tennis, but in life. As Tom Hardy said, the great actor that his dad always taught him to treat the janitor as he would treat the CEO, exactly. right? Exactly. So yeah, for sure. Well, look, thank you so much, um, guys. Coach Noah, um, Tiffin is an amazing guy. I've, I've had a lot of work. I've had a lot of time with him and I've worked with him before. Um, definitely check them out on social media. So go to James Madison University Women's Tennis. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook. Check out their website. They've got stuff on YouTube as well. Um, you can also go online and go on like Google Earth or Google Maps and go look around the campus, um, see what they have to offer. It is an amazing program. But if you do want to go there you have to be ready to rock and roll and you got to have some serious focus for your tennis it's a performance um, based program i mean the success speaks for itself but um look thank you so much Noah. i really appreciate your time and looking forward to sending you a top female recruit from new zealand i love it can't wait <laughs> i appreciate you having me on awesome man best of luck this august season take care all right thanks Cameron.